You're listening to Miss Style, Strength, and Grace with Deidre Murphy. This is your one-stop shop for style, fashion, health, and fitness. Deidre's passion is to help empower women to reach their fullest potential, both inside and out. Deidre and her guests will be discussing how to develop your style, health, and lifestyle hacks to energize your day and inspire you to keep reaching higher levels of success. Deidre is a professional fashion stylist, health guru, and Mrs. Washington 2017. It's time to get open and honest with Deidre. Hey there, and welcome to another spring episode of Miss Style, Strength, and Grace. I am your host, Deidre Murphy, and today we're throwing it back to some of my older episodes where I really focused on talking about style and fashion and image, and it's because A, it's springtime, so a lot of people are kind of going through that spring cleanse, whether it's in their closet or just in their home and kind of fresh new eyes on everything that they have in their wardrobe. And two, I was a little bit inspired to record this episode because I specifically talked on this topic at a women's group just last week. They asked me to come in and speak about what are the things that are making them look a little bit dowdy as women or frumpy as we like to say. I know that's not a really happy word to use, but I'm going to use it because I feel like it resonates with every single woman out there. We all know that feeling of, I just feel frumpy in this, or something doesn't feel right about how I look in the mirror when I see this outfit on my body and I don't know what it is. I can't pinpoint it. I can't pinpoint it. So I'm just going to leave it as is and walk out of the house. The problem is these women are seeing their reflection in the mirror and they're not breaking out of a style rut or they're kind of just seeing their own image through their own reflection and kind of not able to see things with fresh new eyes. And that's where I can come in as a personal stylist and have that fresh objective opinion and to you know share with them some of the style mistakes that nobody's really taught a woman that's keeping her from looking and feeling her best. Actually, I've been listening to the audible version of Rachel Hollis's newest book, Girl, Stop Apologizing. And I was doing a little self preach in the air hands motion the other day when she got to a chapter and she talks about your personal image and how your outer image really does affect the way you feel about yourself. And she talked about how she got a breast augmentation done and she likes to have hair extensions and eyelash extensions because it makes her feel super empowered. It makes her feel on point when she looks in the mirror. So then she has more confidence when she goes out there and does a speaking engagement or is doing some sort of press or even just sees herself in the mirror working from home. She feels more confident and feels like the powerful businesswoman that she is. And I know that same effect can be administered to every single woman out there because when she looks amazing on the outside, she's more able to feel good on the inside and do more with her day. So I am talking about the three style mistakes that are making you look frumpy. Sorry, not sorry, but I'm going to use that word. So number one, it is hiding. Ladies, how many of you out there are hiding in your clothes? Feeling like the areas of your body that you're insecure about, if you just hide them in overly big and baggy clothing, nobody's going to know what you're concerned about inadvertently you're adding not only weight to your body physically and the appearance and the illusion that you are heavier than you really are, but two, you're just really hiding in the, and you're not showcasing the areas of your figure and your physique that are fantastic. We all have things that we love about our body and we have things that we're not super confident about our body, but the trick is to create an illusion that we want and balance the body using cuts and shapes and pieces strategically, even colors strategically. And it doesn't mean that you have to wear everything super tight and feel like a Kardashian when you leave the house. You know what I'm talking about? Those women that wear everything super voluptuous and skin tight, maybe really plunging necklines. Hey, that's great. If that's your style and you want to dress like that and you love the way you look in those bodycon dresses and those really tight figure hugging curve showing pieces, have at it. I know personally, I don't feel confident in those kind of things. So I would rather dress in a way that's going to highlight my best features. And I'm sure that that's kind of the area that most women generally feel 
secure in? How can they make themselves look a little bit lighter, dress in a way that accentuates their best features and kind of minimizes, not hides, but minimizes the areas that they're concerned about. So it doesn't mean that everything has to be super tight like I talked about, but you do want pieces to nicely skim the body and show a feminine silhouette in some way. Whether we like it or not, we all have that hourglass figure. We have that figure in there somewhere. We have a feminine shape. And there's ways to highlight that to make it accentuate the feminine form. So some tips for doing that is look for pieces that have a tiny bit of stretch in there. So even if it's like one to 2% stretch, it's going to help the garment nicely skim over the body, but still be comfortable and not feel constricting. The other big thing that I would highly suggest for anybody is finding a good seamstress or a tailor because you can find pieces to work with the shape that you have and fit the area that's maybe the largest on your body and then get the other areas taken in to fit. I've had to do this for a number of years, actually my whole life. Thankfully, I've been blessed with the fact that my mom is a seamstress, so I've been able to have things kind of custom made not custom made from scratch, so to speak, but you know, we would buy a dress off the rack, didn't quite fit perfectly. So my mom would take it in on the areas that I was smaller. So I have a very small bust line in comparison to my hips and, and weight and thighs. <laughs> so I've always had to have dresses either taken in right around my chest area or at the waist in order to get them to fit my booty. So you find the area that's the hardest to fit. You get the garment to fit that area first and then you have it taken in by a tailor. It's just the way that clothing works. Items that are you know readily available, ready for the masses that you can find at your local department store, boutiques, or even at the discount places like TJ Maxx and Marshalls, they're meant to fit the masses, which is okay, but we need to understand that when we go shopping so that way we can have pieces custom made or custom worked for us later and it's worth the investment. I've talked about this on a previous podcast, like when is it worth it to go to a tailor? You know, you have to take into consideration the cost of the item versus how much it's going to cost to take it in or have it tailored to fit you perfectly. If you're looking for denim, for instance, and you maybe have a smaller waistline in comparison to your hips and your thighs, definitely get your jeans taken in at the waist. It's well trained seamstress can definitely do this for you in a way that doesn't even look like the garment has been tailored or vice versa. Maybe you have a harder time fitting your waistline in comparison to your hips and thighs Buy the garment to fit that. And let's say you spent anywhere from 50 to 200 to $300 on a pair of denim. Most seamstresses are only going to charge 15, maybe 20 bucks to have an alteration on denim. Clearly that's worth it to make your jeans feel like they were custom made for you from scratch by the denim company versus maybe that little blouse you found at Target just for the barbecue over the weekend that was maybe only $15, probably not worth it to invest to take it to a tailor. Doesn't mean that you can't still somehow maybe work with some little tailoring hacks. So maybe it is a little bit too blousey. You could tuck it in all the way. Maybe even just do a little front tuck because what that does is it shows the onlooker's eye that you do have a waist and you're not just hiding in the garment, even if it is a little bit looser or a little bit baggier than you would prefer, or perhaps take a belt and belt it over the top of the blouse and create your own sort of peplum look. So a peplum is a shape where it nips in at the waist and then kind of flares out just below that. You can make your own custom little peplum top, add a belt to it, and then you're able to essentially take it in without taking it to a seamstress and investing in the the time and the money and the energy resources to have it altered for you. I want to touch on something really quick when it comes to hiding in our clothing. I think a lot of it comes down to a mindset issue. It comes down to the fact that many women want to hide in their clothes because maybe they don't feel worthy or there's other issues going on where she feels like there's something wrong with her and she wants to hide from the world and it's a, it's a limiting belief. So first we need to address that and 
I just encourage women to start with positive self-talk and really focusing on the best features that she has. Because believe me, whether you see it or not at first, there are amazing features that you can accentuate. And I sit down with my clients that are my one-on-one clients and we work through this process and I have them first start out by listing their five favorite physical features on their body and not just body, but you know, their face or their, their, their physical person. And maybe it's shocking. Maybe it's not. I've never had a client to this day that can list me five things without hesitation. Maybe they can say one or two, but then beyond three, four, number five, they really struggle. And it's almost like pulling teeth to get a woman to come up with five things that she loves about herself. So I think hiding in our pieces, our clothing really comes down to a negative limiting belief about our own physical appearance. So I want you to start complimenting yourself before you leave the house in the morning, When you're dressed and you're ready to go, say at least one thing that you love about your reflection. Hey, I look great in this color. This pair of shoes is really on point today with this whole outfit. Give yourself at least one compliment before you leave the house in the morning to start working on that positive self-talk. All right, second thing that's making you look a little bit frumpy Let's have a talk about the undergarments, ladies. And I'm not just talking about the undergarments that hold up the ladies, but all the things that we wear underneath the actual outfit, from underwear to bras to even shapewear. Let's talk about all the things of the underpinnings. So when it comes to the ladies, you need to wear a bra that actually fits you correctly. There are, I don't know, so many studies that are, you know, stats that say... 80% of women are wearing the wrong bra or whatever. I don't know whether or not that's true, but your ladies up top are changing whether you, you know, really realize it or not, whether you're maybe fluctuating in weight, you've given birth, maybe you're uh, going through hormone changes with age, they're constantly kind of changing. And so it's important to get fitted at least once a year, but I would recommend at least twice a year. So about every six months get properly fitted. You can go to your local lingerie store, whether it's Victoria's Secret or a custom boutique that really specializes in shapewear and undergarments or even undergarments for women that have had mastectomies, those kind of issues. Go somewhere, get properly measured, get properly fitted for a bra that's really going to hold you in and lift up what you have so it's not falling in awkward ways. I struggle with the fact that I don't have a lot on top, but I still need to wear a bra that fits to really hold up and hold in the pieces that I do have so there's not a gap between the bra and my actual chest. That's something I struggle with. And if you're a little bit more full figured, full busted, you really need to find pieces and undergarments that are going to give you that support that you really need so that the garments that you're wearing on top of your bra and underwear are skimming the body properly. You can tell a huge difference when even just wearing a t-shirt, if you're wearing the right bra and you have a simple t-shirt over it, it's going to skim the body a lot nicer than if you're not wearing a bra or you're spilling out of it. It's just not holding the, the ladies in as properly as they should. And bras wear out with time. You know, just as anything, we have a pair of sneakers that we run with every day. They're going to run out or they're going to wear out. Excuse me. Same thing with our bras. And so many women have been wearing the same bra for the last 10 years. Ladies, give it up. Throw it away. Nobody wants it after you've been wearing it for 10 years. It's okay. You can recycle it or put it in some sort of recycling bin where they can repurpose the materials for different things or take out the wires. I don't know but get rid of it. Go get yourself fitted and feel confident, beautiful, and sexy in your new underpinnings. And that leads to kind of another portion of this topic is make sure the underpinnings go well with the clothes that you're wearing. At least invest in one nude colored flesh toned bra for yourself. I know a lot of women think, well, if I wear a plain white t-shirt, I need to wear a white bra. And actually what that does is it shows through the white t-shirt even more versus if you were wearing a nude or flesh colored bra, it's going to blend in and you won't see the difference between the t-shirt and the 
underpinnings themselves. But then two, you almost need to create a capsule wardrobe for your bras. So many times I see women wearing that cute summer top, especially where I live. It gets to be 110 degrees in the middle of August here. So they'll wear the strappy tank top or the racer back top that nips in in the back or maybe it's strapless with a regular bra. So their bra straps are hanging out. Ladies, that's inappropriate. Number one, it doesn't look classy and you look like a hot mess. Wear the right bra for the outfit. If that means you need to go to the lingerie shop and get a strapless bra, do it. If that means you have small enough breasts and you can wear a sticky bra that doesn't show any sort of straps but still gives you support and holds you up, then do it. This is a non-negotiable. I don't know how many times I see women, both young and old, showing their bra straps off to the world. It looks really unclassy. Sorry, not sorry again to say that. I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here, but make sure your undergarments do not show. It's inappropriate. (laughs) Sorry. Okay. I'm going to calm myself back down. Going further into the underpinnings situation, I would highly recommend some Spanx. Yes, whether you're young, whether you're old, you need a pair of shapewear. I don't care if you're a size zero or a size 20, things move. We're physical people. We have a little bit of jiggle. Even if you're a tiny person, skin moves and your underwear lines will show. And that's where shapewear can come into play. Even when I was my my tiniest and was competing on stage at Mrs. America, I had a shapewear piece underneath my gown. My gown was a low cut back gown, so I had to make sure that the underpinnings didn't show, but I had a pair of Spanx, the the brand Spanx, capri length shapewear underneath my gown. They were super thin and like nylon-y, so they didn't show through. They didn't have any seams on them. They're actually called skinny britches (laughs) shapewear, and they were just enough to make sure that I didn't have any underwear lines so that things nicely skimmed over my body and so my gown didn't cling to me in awkward places while I'm trying to walk on stage under stage lights and I didn't want to have to mess with anything or fidget readjust anything on my dress because then that would take away from the overall appeal of the ensemble. Now, I see this a lot with young women especially that think, oh, I'm 21 years old. I don't need to worry about shapewear. It's not that you need to worry about it. It's the fact that it helps the garment skim over the body nicely. So for instance, just this weekend, I attended the last pageant of the season for the Miss Washington organization. I'm on the board for my local chapter here of Miss America organization, which is called Miss Tri-Cities. And um, the director and I went to a pageant over the weekend in Western Washington. And with 20 contestants, maybe about two of them looked appropriate on stage in their interview outfit. So these interview outfits are typically dresses that you would think of like a day dress, a professional wear, or even a jumpsuit that looks put together and polished professional looking. Perhaps it's a pair of trousers, maybe like a suit option. Regardless of the actual clothing, maybe two of the girls were wearing shapewear underneath. And here's the thing, they would all come out and look, you know, phenomenal, stunning on stage on their way in, but on the way out with the stage lights hitting them and their backside facing the audience, you could see underwear lines, you could see movement under the garment and the pieces were clinging to them in awkward ways versus the ones that were wearing, even if it was just like a loose, not, not, I don't want to say loose, but, um, maybe not super tight pair of Spanx or, or shapewear underneath their dresses. The items, the dress, the jumpsuits, the pants were nicely flowing with their, their body and just didn't take away, but enhanced their overall figure. So I would highly recommend investing in some shapewear, especially the brand Spanx. That's my personal choice. They're obviously, they're not getting paid for this. This is just me touting a brand that I love, like, and use myself, but she has come up with so many different types of pieces. So whether you just need a little bit of a boy short 
to maybe wear underneath a summery dress to make sure that things aren't clinging in funky ways to full on full coverage, lift, nip, tuck, cinch in every way, shape and form. She's got everything in between. And now she's coming out with the leggings and jeans and actual wearable pieces. I haven't personally tried any of them. I have seen the faux leather leggings. They keep advertising them to me on social media. I might invest in some. I don't know. I have some faux leather leggings that I like myself, but we'll see. I've heard great things about them that they don't stretch out, uh, that they keep you held in and you feel really snug underneath them to even their workout wear. They have workout leggings now that, you know, really hold you in as you're doing your exercises. So maybe check that out, but have some undergarments, even if it's not shapewear, so to speak, even a slip can do wonders. So for instance, if you were to wear a summery breezy dress that is flowy, maybe a fit and flare flowy dress. What's going to happen is if you're not wearing some sort of separation between the dress and the actual body, the dress is going to slip into places that we don't want it to. So perhaps it will cling right in the middle of the cheeks and get stuck there, especially if it's kind of a hot muggy day, or it'll cling in areas that we don't want it to. Versus if we wear a slip or a lining of some sort, that piece is the piece that will be that buffer between the actual skin and the garment itself. And the pl- the bonus side of having like a slip underneath a dress is then you don't have to worry about feeling hot and sweaty and you know uncomfortable with the shapewear, especially if it is hot outside. So I highly recommend looking for some underpinnings that will make you look and feel your best no matter what your age is. So slips, shapewear, and the bras for the ladies up top, What, no matter what your size. All right, so this was hard for me to narrow down to idea number three that is keeping you from looking your best and ultimately making you look frumpy because there's a lot of things, but I feel like these three are the top three. So number three is outer pieces or accessories that don't feel right with the outfit and the level of the outfit's overall dress and feel. So let me break that down a little bit farther. So for instance, if you were to go to a fancy schmancy fundraising dinner or gala, you'd be probably dressed in maybe a cocktail dress, maybe some trousers or a suit if you're comfortable with that. Either way, you're going to be more dressed up, especially if it's a black tie affair. You might even be in a floor length gown. It doesn't make sense for you to show up to this event with a giant work tote. It completely weighs down the overall image and the look of the outfit because you're wearing something that says daytime with something that feels nighttime and sophisticated, your dress or your overall styling. So you need to switch from your giant day purse or tote to an evening bag or a small clutch, even if it's just a simple, sophisticated looking wallet where you can carry your essentials, it's going to look better than a giant big tote, especially one that's maybe canvas or even if it's leather, even if it's a nice, pretty tote, it doesn't feel right with the overall feel and look of the ensemble. Let's talk about this in a different way. Maybe it's winter time. I know we had a really harsh winter where I'm at right now and you know, everything with a cup of, or a grain of salt, (laughs) take everything with a grain of salt. So if it's negative degrees outside and there's two feet of snow, you're clearly going to wear a parka or something that's a little bit heavier. But if you're wearing an outfit that says professional and I look and feel empowered, maybe you're wearing a really great looking tailored suit or pencil skirt and a blouse, it doesn't make sense to throw on a windbreaker jacket. It doesn't look right with the outfit. It doesn't feel appropriate for the outfit and it weighs down and makes the whole ensemble look dowdy. So you should have at least one outerwear piece that is 
dressier and you should have one outerwear piece that's a little bit more casual. So that same windbreaker or nylon type jacket would look great on a weekend with some jeans, some cute sneakers and a t-shirt or even, you know, paired with some kind of athleisure inspired look. That's totally fine. But if you're all dressed up, wear a nice jacket, whether it's a wool pea coat or a nice trench coat, something that just says a little bit more elevated and sophisticated and making sure it's cohesive with the entire outfit will help you look and feel more polished and pulled together no matter what the outside is, you know, weather is doing. And I know we're kind of in a transition time. So for instance, right now it is raining and storming outside because hello, April, April showers, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't still wear something nice on the outside, even if you have a nice coat, maybe it's raining, grab it a a chic umbrella or a sophisticated hat to throw on if you're worried about getting rained on or take a silk scarf and tie it over your head and feel like a Hollywood fashionista glamour glamazon from, you know, old Hollywood 1940s and walk into your place of business or wherever your errands are taking you that day. And then once you get there, take the scarf off your head if you're worried about your hair getting messed up. But at least that looks a little bit better than a windbreaker jacket with a hood on it when you're all dressed to the nines. It just doesn't feel right. So I hope that makes sense with you all today as we've talked about the three biggest mistakes that are making you look frumpy. So I have a little bit of an ask at the end of today's episode today. If you have been liking my podcasts, whether I talk about health and fitness or style and image or even have amazing guests on my show, I would love if you would give me a rating and a review on iTunes. It just helps share this podcast and this message with so many other women so that they can feel empowered every single day. Obviously, I would like it if you gave me a five-star review, but I take those reviews to heart and I really try to make this show better for you. Second part of my little ask today is I'm going to be starting a new series on Ask Deidre. So I want to answer your questions. If you have a question, whether it comes to style and fashion and image or beauty to health and fitness or, you know, just mindfulness and personal development or even anything in regards to pageant or interview and working on your stage presence. If you're maybe a contestant or possibly just wanting to work on your interview skills for the new job or new life situation, anything that has to do with style, strength, and grace, send me your question to Deidre at stylebydeidre.com and I will be happy to feature your question on an upcoming episode. Don't worry, these are all gonna be anonymous, so I'm not gonna mention your name or who you are, but I just wanna help other women because I guarantee you the thing that you are wondering about or the thing that you're struggling with that you wanna ask, somebody else is struggling with it too and we can all work through these things together and I would love to share my tidbits, my hacks, my my tips with you on this, this show. So thanks for listening and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Send those questions in and please give me a rating and a review on iTunes. Hey ladies, thanks for listening and we hope you enjoyed today's episode. To help empower more women, please be a doll and rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. For show notes and other free resources we mentioned today, go to stylebydeidra.com.